So folks, finally, is the uh, BMW 330i G20 um, 2019 model. So this car is now a year old. Um, 258 brake horsepower. In terms of torque, I can't remember, but it's roughly about the same. So maybe, I don't know, 300, but I'll find out uh, and plonk it in the, um, in the video for you. So this car is in Mediterranean blue. Um, it's got two extras on it. One of the 19 inch uh, alloy wheels, which are nice. Comes with 18s as standard. Uh, again, I can't remember what they're called, but watch for a caption because I would have looked it up by then. Um, yeah, they're nice. They're easy to clean. Like very open spoked. I think from memory, they're uh, 750 quid over the standard 18 inch. So, um, you know, not bad at all. Um, I think, I don't know what you think, let me know in the um, in the survey above, but I think that's a nice looking car. What is very apparent with it is how much bigger it is than you imagine a 3 Series to be. So, to my shame, I've washed it for the first time today. I've had it washed lots of times, but I've never washed it myself. Um, and I've been washing my little Peugeot 306 Cabriolet. That takes me about five minutes and half a bucket of water. Well, this thing took me two buckets of water and took me ages. It's really a very big car. Uh, apparently, it's bigger or as big as the first series of five series BMW so it's a it's a big old thing um, whether it's packaged that well or not uh, judge for yourself in a second what I'm very excited to learn from the book that I've read for the first time in a year the manual is that there are bag hooks apparently or a bag hook in the boot um, and I've been bemoaning the fact that on a 40 grand car you get no bag hooks so I'm pretty excited to quickly try and find it now and we can have a look in the boot at the same time. What I do like about this is it's not got a self-opening boot um, but BMW cleverly you've got a little boot thing on the key they cleverly put a whacking great big spring in there so when you open it it just springs open clearly you have to shut it yourself but then that's hardly a hardship is it the boot actually again one of the things you'll hear about the three series is oh, they're not very big um, but I would say that boots pretty decent really um, for a saloon car if you're filling that on a regular basis uh, I'd like to say you've got too much stuff so um, get down the tip I found that perfectly adequate um, for my needs now oh, apparently you see I've looked here before and I find no bag hook so if BMW are watching where are my bag hooks because in the book it definitely says there's a bag hook over here somewhere. That's to open to put the seats down. On the book, it appears to be there somewhere. I feel cheated. Can you send me a bag hook in the post immediately? Anyway, that's a bit weird, isn't it? You can see up into all the uh, insulation foam. How weird. Anyway, never had any complaints with the boots. As you can see, you've got um, split fold seats in the back if should you want it, but why would you? Uh, and the other thing you'll hear about these cars is, oh, they're really small in the back. Now, um, you'll have to trust me on this. I'm six foot two. Um, and obviously that seat is set for me in the front there. And I'm going to plump myself in the back. My head's nowhere near, I don't think. You'll be able to tell me. Nowhere near the roof. I've got knee room. I mean, not plenty, but enough. So that six foot two bloke in the front, imagine. Six foot two bloke really in the back. You have to imagine that. Um, and I think we're okay. You wouldn't want three people in here, to be honest, because it's quite a relatively narrow car. Other than that, I think it's all right in the back here. However, what I don't like, you've got no pockets or bins here. Um, nothing at all, not a fabric thing or a net thing or anything. So that's a bit poor. You also, um, although you've got air conditioning controls, you've got no um, USB charger or even a 12 volt um, cigarette lighter type charger. So I think that's really stingy. And apologies that looks so dirty. I think that's my dog's dribble. Um, I haven't really cleaned that bit very well, have I? Um, you've got bins there. They're okay. You get a bottle in there. Um, nothing to write home about. But apart from that, it's all right in the back here. Clearly, I've never driven in, uh, ridden in the back here. Um, oh, 
Yeah. Oh, there you go. You've got cup holders. Um, that's something I didn't get in the um, Audi that I had before this, which was an A6, which was about 42k, I think, and it had no cup holders in the back. So I think the Germans are particularly poor at that sort of stuff. Um, I don't think I've got, no, I haven't. I haven't got a ski hatch. It just makes you think you've got, oh, have I? What's, no. Oh, I have, I've sort of got a ski hatch, look. I'm learning a lot about this car after uh, a year. Um, these are quite cool. You've got little headrests there, but you can flop them down. So um, that gives you a lot better view when you're driving and you've got no passengers. And most of the time it's, it's just me in here. And then in here, you'll have seen from my other um, earlier videos on this car. This is the cognac leather, which I actually like. It's slightly too orange. My son calls it orange, um, but I like it. It's better than the horrible black that they do, where you just feel like you're in a coal pit or something. Um, so that's that. There's some lovely little details on the outside of this car, um, which I'll show you up in a box here. Um, and it's a nicely engineered thing and I really don't have any problems with the way that this car is put together. So that's sort of an overview of the outside um, and the interior. I don't think you'll be disappointed with it. I think you've got plenty of space, certainly very comfortable. I like the bolsters that move on the front seat, although um, that gap that it leaves is notoriously bad for collecting um, pasty crumbs or granola crumbs, uh, depending on your preference. Obviously for me, it's granola crumbs and, and poppy seeds, no pasties, um, but uh, they're very comfortable. For, for a taller bloke like me, it's nice to have that extra support under your, under your knees. Um, you've got your drive modes and what have you here, and I've got a whole uh, extra video about drive modes, and we go through what impact they have on the uh, not to 60 performance of this car. Um, and so there's some surprising findings there. Um, so have a look at that. Here is, uh, here's the link to it. Um, nice little wheel. Um, generally, everything's pretty tasty. Like I said, I've got another video about the interior of this car, so I won't go on, on and on and on about it. Um, my eldest son always goes, I'm rambling on too much in my videos, and he's a young bloke, so you must be right. So anyway, um, let's go for a little drive in this, um, just a general poodle about, and I'll let you know about some of the driving dynamics, and then we'll end by going what's good um, and what's bad. And I have got another video, uh, again, which is uh, probably the one my son's talking about, where I ramble on and on about whether I'll miss this car when it goes, because it goes very soon, um, back to from whence it came, and will I uh, muse on and on and on about whether I'll miss it or not. That's not... And sit down. And sit down. So off we go, it's a lovely day, sunny and cloudy, some of the best days they are, so here we go. What I find interesting about this um, car is it doesn't really know what it is, so as you'll have seen, it's a pretty sporting car. You'd have seen that if you watched my video about the driving modes. I mean, it's by any standards a very quick car. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's 
sporting per se. I'd say it's more of a um, well, it's an executive saloon, I guess, isn't it? I mean, that's what it's supposedly uh, aimed at those thrusting young executives. Um, so I sort of feel that this car is neither one thing nor another. I mean, it's super, super efficient, this car. It does everything you want it to do. You've got total confidence in it doing what you expect of it. Um, it handles decently. It's decently refined. It's comfortable. It's built beautifully well. So it does everything that you expect it to do. However, I do like a James Bond analogy and it's a little bit for me, it's a little bit Timothy Dalton. So it does everything you want to do, but it's about as dull as a uh, Nicola Sturgeon news conference. So it doesn't really engage you. So. It's not a Boris Johnson, uh, you know, at least with Boris you wonder if at any point his trousers are going to fall down or he's going to say something mildly inappropriate to somebody and I think that adds to character whereas this car I think lacks character it doesn't engage you in the way that something slightly more quirky does brilliant car, don't get me wrong but do I, does my heart beat a little bit quicker when I get into it? No. In, in fact, I'd say my heart probably slows down a bit. It's that sort of ice cool, relaxing, most of the time at least, um, sort of soothing car to be in. And I can obviously get up and go, as you'll have seen. Um, and if you stick it in sport mode, even now you'll hear the difference. Um, does, it, does it make me um, whoop and holler with the light? No, it just sort of gets on with it like an efficient um, German driving machine, which is what it is. But it just doesn't capture your heart. It doesn't make you want to get up early on a Sunday morning and just go for a drive for a drive safe and, and, and strangely I've got a Peugeot 306 Cabriolet a 1999 sort of project car and that car more makes me want to just go out for a drive for no particular reason because it's a bit more exciting because you don't know what's going to fall off it you don't know if you're going to get stranded halfway to your destination uh, and particularly if there's a heavy rainstorm you don't quite know how wet you're going to get but in this you know exactly what's going to happen you're going to arrive in the same condition that you left it. You know, I'm flustered, comfortable, you've done 800 miles, um, you've overtaken everything you want to overtake because it's got so much hope. And you sort of just know. Uh, and there's an element for me that just finds that a bit dull. And, and, and to be honest, I think, it's a, I think it's a German car thing. I don't want to overgeneralize, but I had an Audi A6 before this. And again, highly efficient, very good interior, very comfortable, rubbish standard of a specification for a 40 plus grand car. I mean, no cup holders in the rear, don't get me started. But again, it just didn't engage me. It was just a tool, it was just a conveyance, a way of getting to and from work. So maybe it's a German thing. And I think it's one of the reasons why I'm hoping to get a Jaguar of some sort this year. A, because I've never had a Jaguar, and B, um, because I think it'll be a bit more Boris Johnson. I think there'll be a good chance of something dropping off it when you least expect it and having some really annoying quirks that drive you mad but equally having some really really endearing elements that you just love uh, and this car doesn't have either. So highly efficient, extremely fast, roomy enough, very comfortable pretty refined, pretty sporting when you want it to be. I've just had two deer walk out in front of me um, and amble across the road and then disappear into the woods again. How cute. So yeah, it's got everything you need. Is it going to set your pants on fire? Are you just going to yearn to get in this car and drive it? Well, if you're like me, probably not. I suspect and hope that 
whether it's an XF or an XJ that I get later this year, and obviously I'll keep you updated on that, but they'll be cars that I want to go out uh, and drive. They're going to probably frustrate me and delight me in equal measure. But this car does need that. It's the worst thing, you know, when someone's indifferent about you. That's probably the worst thing, isn't it? You'd rather probably they hated you or they loved you. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm going to talk to you in a second. I've got a little addendum. Uh, I can see I'm running out of battery on the GoPro, so I need to sort that out. And then I'm going to come back and give you a couple of minutes on the things that would be so easy to massively improve this car. So I hope you're watching BMW. I'd like to draw your attention to Exhibit A. Storage compartments in boot. Bag holders. In the boot there is a bag holder on the left hand side. And there's the bloody little bag holder. Look, the black thing. So I'm just going to have another look in the boot. Because obviously I'm an idiot. Right, please write in and tell me. There's the bag hook, it's right in front of you, you idiot. That's for the seats. Well, that's not it. On the left, according to the book. BMW, please write in. Or, I don't know, you can send an email, I guess, or, I don't know, message me somehow. Tell me what I'm missing. My blood's boiling. I want the bag hook. I hope the janky was up a bad cook. I better check that before I get one. Anyway, see you soon. Bye.